So um, it is great to be here today. Um, and I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about, um, actually, I'm going to go back one, the evolution of naming. And um, it's interesting because we were just talking about websites and you know what is the future of websites and do we think websites will still be around in 10 years, right? Um, and Nanad thinks they, they will, I think they will, um, maybe not in the form that they are now, but I, I really think that people will be going to the web, whether it's on their mobile, whether it's on their desktop, to find information. Um, and one of the things that they need to do when they are finding that information is to be able to get to a website with a name on it. They're not going to numbers, they're not going to an IP address, they're going to a website. Um, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about kind of the evolution of domain names over the past 30 years or so, and then some of the things that as web designers, one of the first things that, uh, that you do if you have customers coming to you is potentially help them pick out a name. Sometimes they already have their names picked out, but many times customers say, I'm not quite sure what I should do with a name, so can you help me pick out a name? How do I pick out a good .com? And I'd like to pose that we're not picking out a good .com, we're picking out a good website name, and it doesn't always have to be a .com, and people can still be found on the internet. But a little bit about me, um, again, I'm Crystal Peterson. I work with Newstar, uh, and we run .biz, we run .co, we run .us, uh, .nyc, .au, um, and a host of others. We're also a technical services provider for over 300 other domain names uh, on the internet today. Um, I've been in the business for about 10 years, um, so the same as Nanad. Um, I started with .mobi back when it was launching. Um, I started with them in 2005 and it launched in 2006 as one of the new domain names of the time. Um, and I've worked with uh, PIR, which runs the .org domain name. Uh, and then I uh, helped to launch .co back in 2010. And we were acquired in 2014 by Newstar. And here we are today. Um, so I've enjoyed a, a lot of time in this business um, with the fact that domain names are about 30, 30 years old. I've spent a third, of, a third of the life of domain names in, in the domain name business. So <laughs> it's kind of exciting. A um, little small tidbit fact about me. Um, I did not uh, go to school for marketing or anything like that. I actually was a former professional ballet dancer. So. A lot of what I do today actually I take from having taught dance and having danced. So stuff can, can swing both ways. <laughs> um, so again, and I'm going to read a little bit because I'm going to get through some of the, the, the boring stuff first so that we can get to the, the fun stuff. But Newstar, um, we manage about 6.4 million domain names on the internet. And we're an information services and analytics company that looks to bring people together online to make sure that enterprises can reach their consumers, consumers can reach information that they want to be able to reach online, and they can do it in um, a fast manner. Uh, we have uh, uh, DNS nodes all over the uh, world in order to make sure that that happens. Um, we have about 14,000 customers. Uh, we are a $900 million business and uh, about 1,600 employees. From the registry services angle, as I mentioned before, we have a lot of domain names that we manage um, ourselves and or uh, are the technical services provider for. So for instance, .tel, .travel, uh, .club, .biz, .uno. All of those are run by other registries, but we run all of their technical services, uh, .biz, .co, .us. We manage those end to end. So we do the marketing and financials as well as the technical services. Um, some of our other corporate clients that we have are AT&T, um, PayPal, uh, DirectEye has been a, a client, um, reseller clubs, you know, through Having registrars, uh, we have a lot of clients all over the world, and um, we are very proud of our client base and always looking to serve. But 
Okay, enough about the boring stuff. I wanna take us through just a brief history of domain names, kind of where they started, how they, you know, kind of came, came to be, and, you know, again, getting to where we are now. So, to me, I believe it all starts with your name, right? It's your domain name. Um, the first domain was registered in uh, March 15th, 1985, um, which was Symbolics.com. Uh, Symbolics was a computer manufacturer in Massachusetts. And, um, you know, today the site, actually if you go to the site, it is a site that is a museum of the internet and a museum of uh, just factoids about being online. It's, uh, it's a pretty interesting space. but. Um, the first .org was registered in July of 1985, and the first uh, .net was also registered in 1985. The first .org was MITRE.org. It's still run by that company, MITRE. Um, MITRE is actually based in Washington, D.C. I have several friends that work for MITRE. Um, and then the first .net was Nordu.net, so um, all in 1985. And at that time, domain names were free, so you could acquire a domain name for no cost. Um, the people that were taking in the paperwork for domain names would help you figure out if you needed a com or if you needed a net or if you needed an org. Um, com stood for commercial, so if you were a more commercial company, you got a com. If you were more of a network or um, a connector, you got a .net, and if you were anything else, you got a .org. <laughs> um, and that's kind of how it was, but in 1995, uh, domain names were no longer free. They started to be $100 for the first two years, um, and you had to buy two years at a time. So all of a sudden, uh, you have a uh, cost associated, um, and it's not a cheap cost. It, it was not a bottom of the barrel, and let's see you know, how low we can go. It, people realize that to get online, you wanna have, um, you know, this is your brand online. Um, 1998, we started to have privatiz privatization of the DNS and also um, the dawn of ICANN. ICANN is the policy body that helps to set uh, a lot of the policies for how the domain name system is run from country to country and around the world. Um, there are three conferences uh, a year for ICANN. There was one that just happened this past week in Helsinki. They generally put them in different places around the world to be able to access different um, customer bases, different thought process, different governments about um, how the domain name system should work. Um, from there, 2000, um, one of the things that uh, ICANN wanted to be able to do was to help promote competition and to be able to give consumers choice. Um, whether, whether we think that they did that well at the beginning or not, um, that has always been one of the goals of uh, the domain name system, is to not only have one, but to really be able to promote choice and to give consumers options to be able to brand themselves online. So in 2000, you started to have new domain names that were approved to be able to be launched. .biz was one of those. .info was one of those. .mobi, uh, just a few short years later. Uh, .name was one of those. So you started to have a little bit more competition and a little bit more choice. It was not just com, net, and org anymore. Um, in 2007, uh, one of the largest domain name sales happened. You had vacationrentals.com, which was uh, bought by Bill Sharples uh, for $35 million. And it was a way, he said, he wanted to be able to um, block some of the uh, competition that he was seeing from Expedia. Uh, so he paid $35 million in 2007. Um, another famous, uh, famous sale was sex.com in 2010 for $13 million. Um, I actually didn't know about vacationrentals.com, and when I, when I found this fact, I had to go search out um, several different sites to, to make sure that it was correct. So either all of those sites are wrong, <laughs> or this really did sell for $35 million. So, um, you know, I think uh, it, it shows the power of a name and really what we can do with, with having that name online. 
Um, in 2013, uh, uh, Who API, which is a company that does uh, a lot of spinning and a, and a lot of data mining of, of, the, um, of the internet, uh, put out a statement that the internet had run out of four letter .com. So not necessarily four character, there are still some four character left, but four letter .coms were gone um, by 2013. Um, Three-letter.coms were gone in the 90s. I believe it was 1998. Um, so there, people were looking for more choice. Now, that doesn't mean that they're not available on the secondary market and your customers could go buy them for a higher price. Um, but having a first-time registered four-letter.com, no more. Um, also in 2013, we had done a study in the U.S. For, with small businesses. So DuckCo did a study, and uh, one of the findings was that 57% of small business owners said that it was harder to find a good domain name for their company. It was easy to name their baby. Um, I found that fascinating because you know your your children, right? Are you know finding those names are you know one of the most important steps. Um, but that just shows you how important naming is, whether you're naming your child, whether you're naming your business, whether you're naming your next mar marketing campaign, um, in order to, to be able to get to the good design, to be able to get to uh, the websites and to have customers really come see what you're designing, it starts with what is the name of the place that they're going to find that design. So, in 2014, we get to the point where now, again, we want to provide more competition. We want to give consumers more choice in providing good name options that might not be a .com. There are still .coms out there, and .com still sells very well, but it's not just about .com anymore. It's really about how to find good naming options. So, I wanted to run a small video. This was put together by ICANN when they started to approve more than 100 new generics that, that came out. The dot is making new friends, more than 1,300 of them. And they're going to change the internet like never before. The old friends, like org, net, and com, as well as the many two-letter friends from around the world, will continue to sit by the side of the dot. But these new friends promise to show us new things, take us to new places, and open new paths to innovation. Some are brands, names you already know, who are designing new ways to better serve your online needs. Some are generics, everyday words that just might attract your personal or professional online interests. Still others are cities and towns, offering an online home for you or your business. And for the first time, dot names in many more languages and characters giving voice to a billion more internet users. Yes, thanks to the dot's many new friends, the internet is changing. So where does that leave us? Um, today we have more uh, than 314 million domain names on the internet. Um, there are 144 million of those that are specific uh, country code top level domains uh, like .in or .co.uk um, or .co.jp, things of that nature. That's just a little bit less than half of the domain names are other than .com or .net or any of the generics that are registered. Um, also, within the past two years, since a lot of these new generics have been launched, uh, there are, as of the time of um, VeriSign's domain name brief, which is uh, December 2015, there were a little over 10 million new domain names. So within two years, 10 million domain names had been registered within these new extensions. That's about 3.5% uh, of the total domain name market. So it's really showing that people are looking for choice. They are looking for options. Um, you know, and some of those options may be brand protection, but a lot of those options are people looking for good naming, whereas somebody might want example.flowers, somebody else might want example.guru. Those can be two different sites with two completely different functions, even though they might have the, the first part uh, of the name you know, to the left of the dot might be the same. So that uh, brings me to a quote by um, the CEO of Overstock a little while ago, who said that, you know, in this new era of the internet, um, short and memorable web addresses 
are really uh, critical to capture the attention of consumers as they're, as they're looking online and as they are navigating online, how to get uh, names in their mm -hmm. heads so that they can remember them so that they can go to them. And yes, search is very important, but if you can't even remember how to spell a certain brand name in order to search for it, that becomes a problem. So you still want to be able to, ser to search and to have a brandable presence within that name. Um, and from there, a lot of times, um, I don't know if, if you have experienced this, but many customers, they start to, um, to make similar the fact that they want a .com, and they say, well, I need a .com. Really what they're looking for is a website, right? But they're like, eh, I just need a .com. And we're trying to figure out, do you really want a .com or do you really just need a, a website, right? And there's a lot of different types of products out there that have kind of become mainstream and the brand name com becomes the generic term. So that you start saying that brand name when really what you mean is a generic term. Um, and .com, we don't think .com should become the generic term. .com is very important. .com is the largest domain name on the internet today, but it's not the generic term for any website, right? Some examples of some other brands and generic terms. Um, some of these, mostly from the U.S. I'm sure there's others here that um, that I don't know about. But you know, as you're as you're sneaking through, so in the U.S., we don't necessarily ask if somebody needs a facial tissue if they sneeze. We say, do you need a Kleenex? Kleenex is the brand term, right? Um, I don't remember the last time I said facial tissue except for in this example. <laughs> I always say Kleenex and I think about it, I'm like, I'm perpetuating that. Um, another one is Band-Aid. Um, I, oh, I actually happen to like the, uh, the brand Cur uh, Curad, which makes Band-Aids, which makes adhesive bandages. Um, but Band-Aid has become synony synonymous with that adhesive bandage, right? Um, and it, other, other companies that make products in that same, same field, um, you know, they're just as important. Bubble wrap, this factoid I didn't know, bubble wrap is a brand name. Um, and it's, I, I believe it's uh, uh, adhes not adhesive, but um, it's package sealing. It's a type of package sealing, but bubble wrap itself has been trademarked and branded. Um, and another one, this cute, nice little dog here, which is a seeing eye dog. Um, if you ever, ever, uh, a seeing eye dog is only a, an eye dog that has gone to the seeing eye dog school, which I believe is in Minnesota. Any other dog that's trained to be able to help uh, their owners is a guide dog. So the seeing eye dog is the brand term. and. What a seeing eye dog is, is a guide dog. So from there, we don't want to get into having a .com. We want to get into having a website, having a domain name, having um, a online presence. But uh, .com is where computers began, and we are very, very thankful. But .com is not where it ends. It's just one of the options, um, a great option, but it's just one of the options. So. Um, I was uh, talking to Nanad earlier, and we were kind of saying through some of the other brand terms that kind of come to mind when you think of, you know, what's that brand that I kind of always call something? One of them, Xerox. You always go Xeroxing. You know, you go copying. <laughs> you know, and Xerox is a type. Um, another one is a PowerPoint. So Microsoft uh, coined the term PowerPoint, and it's a, and it's a program. Um, but Keynote, Many times they'll say, oh, did you make your PowerPoint? Yes, I made it out of Keynote. Well, no, I, I made a presentation and graphics you know, pro program. It was Keynote. <laughs> so um, just a, that was a fun to me because I, I do. I always say, you know, did you have a PowerPoint presentation? Nope. <laughs> I have a Keynote. Um, so we come from not wanting to brand and, you know, kind of coming out of the dot-com world, right? Um, back in the 1980s, Slash was very cool. Um, that's also the same time that domain names came around, right? Um, but 
in creating some of the website hierarchy and being able to um, help customers find information inside the website, um, we have a new mantra, and that is slash the dash, or dash the slash, excuse me. <laughs> get, rid of, get rid of the slash and really help create in this new era of domain name um, extensions, really create a, um, a channel and how to create web channels and marketing doorways with domain names. So gone to me, in, in um, my opinion, gone are the days where you buy one domain name and maybe you'll buy a few others to protect that brand name and always, uh, and always forward into your homepage. But gone are those days, and now we're entering the days where we use domain names like marketing channels and putting domain names into different parts of the website, different parts of where you have design so that people can find different areas. They're not only just going to homepages. Um, so with over 500 new extensions, there are many, many options for how people can find content find uh, a lot of the cool stuff that you're building, how can they find it? Um, using domain names as those marketing channels. Um, and I have an example here in, in just a moment. Um, and then also having them be short and memorable assets that may forward into a longer string that has the slashes in it but really using those as tools in marketing campaigns. For example, Nike Store, if you go to, um, to try to find one of the Nike stores online, you get this really long, ugly store locator name. Nobody's gonna be able to remember that to get back to that. Um, I actually tried to search for it and you end up getting to the homepage and then you have to click on locations and all of that versus being Nike being able to use Nike.store. Um, also, they could use store.nike because it's Nike, they, they bought their own brand name. Um, either one would work. Both of them are more memorable than www.nike.com forward slash US forward slash EN underscore US forward slash store dash locator. That's really easy to remember. That doesn't even fit on a lot of the places where they're gonna, where they're gonna want a brand, right? Um, so that all of the really cool design that is in the Nike store, nobody will get to because they can't remember how to get there. <laughs> um, so I have an example, right? So we have yourbusiness.com. Yourbusiness.com has been in, in business for the past 10 years, so they have a really awesome .com name. They're very proud of it. Um, they're also, they've been growing. They've been growing um, outside in multiple countries, Germany, the US, um, also the UK. They're getting a lot of customers from those countries. So they want to be able to uh, market to those countries. Um, and then they've also been planning a couple of really cool marketing campaigns to be able to promote their products and services and to get people to their website to be able to um, to buy their products, right? So how do we help, um, help yourbusiness.com become more memorable to, to their customers and, and be able to be found? Um, here's a potential way to do that. We have your which is their main website. Um, yourbusiness.co uh, could be their global place where you can find a lot of the different uh, uh, campaigns that they do. Uh, Yourbusiness.us, where they have all of their US customers starting to navigate through from IP Detect. Uh, Yourbusiness.de, yourbusiness.co.uk, and then they also have some of their marketing campaigns. Um, they're starting to build a, um, a member program for, uh, for, mem for members that are um, buying their products frequently. They, you could do that on yourbusiness.club. Um, they have a philanthropic area that they really are starting to go green in a lot of places. So, and they're starting to give back. Um, that is yourbusiness.org. Um, they have a media channel, so they want, they're putting out some really cool videos and they're really doing a lot of stuff there. That could be at yb.media. Um, because, you know, people are maybe typing that in on their phone and it's really hard to type in yourbusiness.media, so yb.media. 
Um, they have a blog where they start to talk about all of their really cool products that they're going to be putting out. That could be at yourbusiness.blog. And then all of their video content could be at yourbusiness.tube. And again, this, this is kind of blown out for example. Um, you know, a lot of businesses may or may not use all of these examples, but this is an example of how we can really use domain names as channels versus all of that at yourbusiness.com forward slash blog, forward slash uh, fill, uh, uh, green, forward slash videos, forward slash this, forward slash that, which all leads back to the home page, but all of these channels can then lead into different parts of the site to really get to the design and the content that is, that is what people are looking for so that they will come back again and again. Um, we really think that with domain names, it's a link to your global marketing plan as well as being able to network. So um, with all of the options there are today, to be able to think of domain names as um, a way to get into uh, you know, different channels, to get into the mindset, um, and be, be memorable. Um, people are still learning about domain names. Uh, sometimes when I say that there's 289 CCTLDs out there, CCTLDs out there, people go, really? Oh. <laughs> There's over, you know, 150, 200 um, generics out there, and then you have a lot more uh, brands. So there's a lot of options. It's not just ComNet and org, um, or it's not just ComNet, org, info, and biz. Um, I am a fan of the .biz domain name. I think um, .biz, the domains like .biz, .info, .co that launched a while ago, um, can have a resurgence. Um, and in this new wave of domain names, those are still viable options for, for customers. They're, they're, they're not old and tired. Um, as with anything new, there are a few challenges that, uh, that the industry is still working through. One of them you may have heard of called universal acceptance. Um, this comes in with some of the email issues because uh, can strings in search engines and or email um, clients be, be read? Like if I have a duck company, um, will the email handle that, right? And again, this comes down to channels. You may end up having your customers, and this might not be something that you work on, but being able to provide them information. You may say, hey, if you have a, a, a domain name in, let's say, a .biz or a .net or something, that could be where you have your email, but you still have your marketing campaigns and some of these new extensions to be able to be found. Um, but universal acceptance is at usag.tech, um, and you can follow there. Uh, also, Newstar um, is a member of the Domain Name Association. Um, and that is where we are doing a lot of work to be able to share to the general public about the value of domain names and what's going on. And that's at the, the dna.org. And then also ICANN itself. Um, again, that's more of a policy body and a little bit more internal um, and industry oriented. But there's a lot of information there about you know, the use and getting out domain names. Um, so one of the things that customers are always looking for, um, so you know, we've gone through the history of domain names, where they came from, right? Um, looking through how to use domain names as channels and not just using one domain name over and over again, but really being able to get down to the source. But really what customers want is all of that content, all of that um, you know, awesome website that you guys are, are, are building for them, they want to be found, right? Am I going to be found? If I use that, that new dot company that you keep promoting to me, are people really going to find me? Um, when 85% of consumers search for local business online, are the search engines really going to be able to find that new domain name? The answer is yes. Um, there's a lot of good SEM and SEO tools out there, and it really comes down to, um, are, is that being used? Um, I'm not here today to talk about any of that, but it is really the fact that content is king. Um, it's not content as long as I have a .com. It's content is king. Um, so if you have a good domain name, um, I believe one that's not super misspelled, um, if something is short and memorable versus too long, um, and you have good content, 
your customers can be found. And then once your customers are found, those websites that you've built with all of that beautiful design, um, it will be seen, right? Um, but if you don't have good content, if you don't have a good strategy, in some ways it doesn't matter what your design did and it doesn't matter what their name was, um, they're probably not going to be found. So it really comes down to content. It doesn't come down to, do I have a good .com? Um, so I believe and that domain names are not a fad. Um, many people ask, uh, especially in the world, the world of search as we are, where all you do is search and you get, you get links and people aren't paying attention to the link that they're going to, well, won't domain names go away? Um, and I believe they won't, because this comes back to what we were just talking about in the end of the last presentation and talking about it at the beginning of this one, the fact that websites in whatever form, and they will definitely evolve, websites will still be out there. People will still be navigating to them. And marketing campaigns and, and um, providing campaigns to drive customers to websites will still be out there, which means that domain names in whatever form or fashion um, will still be around. Even if they're just used as assets to get to a longer string, um, they'll still be around. So, um, does anybody remember the laser disc? That was a fad. <laughs> it was around for a brief minute. Um, it turned into uh, DVDs, which was awesome, but um, I can remember laser discs. Uh, I was very young at the time, but a couple of my friends' parents who were very well off, they, they all got laser disc players, and I was very jealous. And then a couple years later, you're like, well, whatever happened to the laser disc? <laughs> Um, another one, 8-track uh, cassettes. Um, this is going way back, but 8-track uh, cassettes, they were around for a brief minute. Um, they ended up turning into cassettes, which were around for a little bit longer before we got CDs and now digital music. But all kind of fads. They led to something else, but they weren't really around long enough to really, really stay. But um, domain names have been around for 30 years, right? I think there's still a lot to learn, but now more than ever, I think domain names are here to stay. Um, there will definitely be more evolution, even from where we are now. Um, I think uh, when we were talking about some of the uh, products that have poor design or were created only by engineers, EPP is one of those that is awful. Um, and that's actually the system that registering domain names sits on, but, um, but I believe domain names are, are here to stay. And uh, <laughs> as shown by this picture, um, you know, we, we can get to a place where we're using and helping our customers really use them like, like they should, should be used. Because um, when you have an online home, uh, it all starts with your name. Where are you going? How, how am I naming? How am I branding myself? What am I going to call myself? Um, you know, just a thought, when, whenever uh, you meet somebody and you, and you tell them your name, and if they then, let's say, half hour, 45 minutes later, call you by the wrong name, your name is important, right? So having a name is very important. You don't want just a few, a few numbers or, you know, a, an IP address. It's, it's really about a name. And uh, I wanted to show one last video. This is uh, from the, a campaign by Donuts. Donuts is in the new round of uh, domain extensions, is one of the companies that had, uh, I believe, over 200 extensions that were approved. And it, they have launched a little over 100 of them so far. Um, and it's really about freedom of choice. So whether your customers want a .com, which is, is good, whether they want a .biz, whether they want a .guru, or whether they want a .company, or a .online, or a .tech, um, it's really about having the freedom of choice and really being able to share with them the fact that there are more options out there. <laughs> Last thought.
thought. Don't stick your head in the sand. <laughs> um, you know, sometimes, especially, especially with all the options out here, everything that's been going on in the domain name world, um, a lot of times it's easier to just think, well, you know, I'll just stick with .com. .com is, you know, .com is the biggest. It's, it's right there. Um, you know, since it's the biggest, it must be the best, right? Um, no, again, .com is not bad, but it's the biggest because it was, it was the first. It's, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best or that it's the best option for your customers. Um, and don't let your customers stick their head in, in the sand too. Again, we always want to give our customers what they want, but to help gently kind of guide them t through knowing that there are other options and they can be found online with whatever domain name they choose as long as they have a good plan for content, um, for design, for some of those other really important things. It's really not about having a .com, it's really about having a website and an online presence and a home online. Um, so that's it. I knew that I was right before lunch, so I didn't want to hold anybody back from lunch, so uh, I, I wanted to, to, to get through. Um, but also, you know, I'm, Definitely here for questions, so if you have any questions, please let me know.